We are in the studios of La Tuerca, the political show founded by Pablo Iglesias and one of the incubators of the experience of Podemos. This year, anybody with an interest in political transformations has looked at Spain. A very complex, multifaceted experience that begins with the 15N movement, then continues with movements for housing, such as the PA in Barcelona, social spaces, occupied spaces, cultural spaces, and last but not least, the courage of dealing directly with the institutional and political level of representation. We can re remember the great success of Podemos at the European elections, and even more importantly, more recently, the success of citizen-led coalitions in Barcelona, Madrid, and cities across Spain in taking power and, and winning uh, those elections. We discuss today with some of the key people behind this experience in Madrid, trying to understand a little bit more of its origins and of its future direction only a few days before the national elections of the 20th of September, and trying to understand as well some of its implications for the rest of Europe, and notably the relation between social movements, active citizenship and political parties and institutions that the Spanish experience reminds us of. We speak about this today with Juan Luis Sanchez, director of El Diario newspaper, Ana Mendes, working in the culture department of the city of Madrid, Mario Munero, working in the communications department of the same town hall, and Carlos del Clos, researcher, activist, and co-founder of Roar magazine. <laughs> Welcome to Talk Real. The last year has been quite momentous in Europe. We've seen uh, incredible change happening in Greece and the uh, rise and uh, stalling of Syriza. Uh, we've seen a um, left leader uh, such as Jeremy Corbyn come to power in the main opposition party of the United Kingdom. We've seen a uh, movement from Ireland to, to Slovenia recuperating a certain radicalism or at least a certain ambition of political discourse. And of course, we've seen, perhaps most important of all, uh, an incredible and exceptional uh, experience in Spain from the European elections and the sudden rise of Podemos to the municipal elections and the formation of citizen-led coalitions taking power in a number of, Euro of, of Spanish cities across, across the country. Uh, and perhaps that's, that's where I want to start. I want to look a little bit with you at uh, what the concrete alternative that this experience has represented can tell us and what, what are, according to you, some of the most important takeaways or some of the most important experiences from the last year uh, of Spanish politics, from the European to the municipal uh, elections. Maybe, Juan Lu, as a journalist, I, I ask you to take the lead and, uh, okay. and break the ice. Okay, I'll try. This, this has been a very uh, intense uh, four years since last elections in Spain. And last two years, or one year and a half, has been like crazy. Uh, we had this f um, energy in the air and in the squares and in new forms of social movements, in new forms of activism that were not absorbed by or not channeled by any political party. Um, not in the right, of course, but not in the left either. Uh, not with uh, smart uh, strategic thinking, with, not with connecting with these uh, new activists. So suddenly Podemos appeared, European elections came. They had a lot of success, not only in votes, but uh, in media. Uh, they, they became a hype. They became like the, 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 the cool guys in the, in, in the arena. And after that, a lot of these scenarios uh, have been overlapped. Uh, at the beginning, it, it appeared to be like the new left, uh, generation, generationally speaking. Uh, then it, it seemed to be like a very good bet to win the elections, and all the polls were saying to us that Podemos could win the general elections coming right now. But yeah, that, that bubble kind of relaxed, kind of this, uh, not vanished, but a, it was a little bit uh, litter um, afterwards. So uh, at that moment, a lot of people began to think in municipalities, in local activism becoming more institutionally engaged. And that's how uh, local initiatives were born. They, were, they, they had a relation with Podemos, but they were more, much more than uh, Podemos. And they, they won. They won Barcelona, they won Madrid, they won 
uh, Valencia. Uh, they won two cities in, in Galicia. So they won a lot of very important cities. So uh, now we are in this debate uh, with Podemos as a key a player, but also with a lot of people that want to contribute to Podemos but not being part of Podemos, uh, kind of a part of the same uh, phenomenon but not the same way of channeling that energy. And, and then we have also uh, a debate on how social movements, that new form of activism, have to, have to uh, relate to that sure. phenomenon. And I want to get to the relation between that and the party form or the institutional form in, uh, in just a few minutes. Maybe we, we go ahead with you. Well, how I see, uh, I agree with, with uh, Juan, it has been a, a wider uh, lapse of time like since the, the European elections. I was just remembering that it was uh, almost two years ago that in the Observatorio Metropolitano, which is a, a collective I, I am um, part of, uh, started to write the Apuesta Municipalista. So it was even before the European elections, even before uh, the expectations uh, uh, around Podemos uh, somehow diminished that uh, some people were thinking, I mean, uh, what, what do we do in this uh, situation where uh, the May 15 movements uh, seem to have reached a certain kind of very obvious limits in their capacity to make uh, effectual changes uh, to the material conditions of life of people. Uh, so it's, it's been longer. It's not uh, a question of saying because of the, uh, of course, because of, without the rise of Podemos in the European elections, probably nothing of this uh, could have been possible, but the aim of change, the, the sense of the change of face has been present before. This is one thing. The other thing, I, I, I'm still uh, astonished by our own capacity to adapt to new situations. I mean, situations change, I don't know how is your, your experience, but for me, like every three months, the actual scenario is totally different. And, and uh, I think that the, the different actors have shown uh, this capacity of react, all of the actors, I mean, like the, the rights of uh, a counter, uh, let's say, populist party to Podemos, such as Ciudadanos, it, it has shown also a capacity of uh, reaction on some other part of the, of the society. Yeah, well, from Catalonia in general, it's a little bit different. Um, it's different and not that different. Uh, it, on the one hand, uh, we've seen an increased uh, kind of rhythm of elections because we've had more elections since the European elections. Um, in Catalonia with these, um, you know, the pseudo-referendum plebiscitary uh, elections on Catalan independence. Uh, and we've, we've had, <clears throat> we've also had, of course, the, the municipal elections as well and, and all of this kind of stuff happening. Um, but let's say that the relationship between uh, movements and uh, even mainstream political parties in Catalonia now is a constant. That is to say, uh, the governing right national party, uh, the one that, that implemented austerity, now has a mass movement behind it through the independence cause. Um, and you know, is re referring, uh, recurring to a lot of the kind of a lot of the similar rebranding efforts that we've seen um, characterize uh, the new upstart political parties, um, albeit in a very superficial way. So uh, whereas you know, um, a confluence of different political actors in um, Barcelona goes under the name Barcelona en Comú that unites different political parties with different political independence and uh, campaigns, um, well, you know, the governing parties uh, there saw that that worked. Uh, and uh, you know, made their together for yes, you know, and, and even using these similar kinds of phrases and this positive kind of uh, discourse, uh, they've applied that and uh, and kind of uh, you know showed that you can siphon off some of the energy generated by the new upstart parties. So I think over the on the one hand, in the year you know from Barcelona, in the one year that has uh, transpired between the European elections and now. We've seen that. Um, we've seen that also th through Ciudadanos uh, that you know uh, upstart parties, um, you know new discourse, generational change even are not the sole domain of leftist uh, of leftist uh, movements and leftist uh, sensibilities. Um, so so I think that's that's kind of what we've seen. In addition to all of the you know very inspiring things that we've seen, um, you know come from 
I guess, radical left organizations uh, like Podemos. You know, they broke the ice, but the ice is broken, and uh, and other people have have stepped in. So, okay. um, yeah, I'd say I'd leave it at that. Maybe we just close the round with the view from the yeah. town hall of Madrid. Yeah, well, in, in, in addition to uh, Ana and, and Juan, also Carlos, I, I, I just wanted to say that, for example, uh, from the 2011 in the, in the squares, the, 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 the way of the organization of society changed in a way. So it, for me, it's not just about social movements and parties. There's another like layer or something like that that I would say to call uh, uh, organized citizenship, which is not actually the same of uh, uh, social movements. And two of the main achievements that we did in the last year in this, this sprint uh, was actually, in my opinion, to, to, to develop uh, tools that could uh, make us able to get in touch these diff um, this different labels and layers. Also because uh, if we wanted to win, as we did in some different different cities, uh, to build the, these common tools as the program uh, or, or digital tools to participate was very important to share that code and, and, and to work together. Help me to understand how this works because we're quite used to the idea of a new party emerging or a new left party emerging and somehow managing to work through the media and through public opinion in a way that galvanizes and then organizes a certain success and perhaps even the conquest of, of power. But what we've seen in Spain is quite different. It, it is not simply the emergence of a party, but it is the emergence uh, of, a, of a certain political common sense that willingly negotiates political power from the position of an alliance, a coalition between citizen movements, active citizenship, more traditional social movements, innovative social movements, as could be the power of, uh, of, of, of uh, Barcelona, uh, as well as political party forms, such as, such as Podemos. How does this articulation function? That's a good question. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a very good question. Maybe the question, the question is if, if it functions, first yeah. of all. Yeah. Well, does it function is the, is, the, is the first question. Yeah. Yeah. Does it function? After yeah. conquering uh, however many cities in you have in, uh, from May, I would start in from the assumption that it does function somewhat. It's about autonomy. For, for, for me, I, I, I would say that if this works, it's because all of the, those different layers and labels and whatever uh, has their own autonomy to work. Uh, It's about autonomy. <laughs> I mean. uh, yeah, I would say there are, there are two ways or, or two different approaches to this. Uh, you have the slow track and the fast track. Uh, Podemos is the fast track. They, they saw this uh, opportunity and they decided to you know, go for it, building a party after going to elections, uh, naming uh, or, uh, an agenda before having uh, a program. And, and trying to get advantage of the opportunity, the, the opportunity in media, the opportunity as a hype, the opportunity as people that speaks and, and, and has a very sophisticated way of uh, pushing their agenda. Uh, that fast track uh, ha is not very uh, well uh, received by people who want to be a slow track and, 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 ver and trust autonomy to build that slow track. Uh, a slow track. So you have Podemos like going very, very quick, and then you have the um, uh, local initiatives going a little bit slower because they go further, as uh, an old times uh, saying uh, stated. And uh, yeah, that, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure which one is the best at the end of the, of the story, because we are not at the end of the story. But, but I do know that uh, the slow track won elections in seven cities. Yeah. And today, in a few days, uh, those uh, people participating in these more autonomous platforms are going to have a very good result in the general elections. Uh, that result is going to be collaborating with Podemos result, in a way. So I would say that, that um, there are two kind of approaches to how to articulate and, and how to function around that. I think one of the things that we're seeing, I, I agree very much with Juan when he, when he says this, and, and I think one of the things that we're seeing is, you know, 
um, if we just consider this moment an, uh, a structure of political opportunity and want to fast track it and bypass the normative part, then what you end up getting is um, a space that opens up for a plurality of actors uh, and not just those that have built the legitimacy in this new way of acting. So that's why you get something like Ciudadanos and Podemos jumping into the resulting gap of a generational, you know, of a generational gap between norms and practices and cultural expectations. So that's, that's one thing there. Um, what happens in a place where you do the slow cooking um, is you get these very interesting tensions uh, that are structured around uh, a new set of expectations and a new set of legitimacy, a uh, new, new way to define legitimacy. So in the last couple of days, for instance, uh, the PA, precisely, of Barcelona issued a critical letter to Mayor Ada Colau, who was their spokesperson until she was uh, their candidate for mayor. Um, and, you know, you had this situation where, you know, the mayor of Barcelona said, well, they're doing what they need to do, and they're absolutely right. There simply isn't we, we, we can't do more than what we're doing right now from this weak position of a minority government. Um, but we're trying and we're doing everything we can to do it. And so you get these, these interesting tensions arising. And I think that's very good because due to the fact that it was a slow cooked process, um, that tension can be productive and not purely destructive. In other places, in uh, among Podemos, who have opted for the fast track, a more insurgent approach, uh, internal discrepancies have threatened to be extremely dis uh, disruptive uh, to their uh, to their assault on the institutions, um, and the mainstream media can very quickly pounce on internal dissent and turn it into a cover story, um, using you know very well-meaning people as um, you know as uh, useful uh, interlocutors. Yeah. To what extent there is an interplay between the fast track and, and the slow track? To what extent there is a virtuous competition, the challenge that the emergence of Podemos has thrown is then picked up by movements and citizens that organize themselves in the face of a challenge that also comes from the political fast track process? Uh, are they just separate processes or are they actually in dialogue one with the other? I think that, that I mean, I, I don't agree with, I mean, the slow track was quite fast. Uh, at least for us that I come everything, from, everything <laughs> right. I come from the from the slow track uh, part of the of the story. Uh, we organize a party. Uh, we propose a party, organize a collaborative uh, a program, uh, gather you know some momentous, convince uh, somehow Podemos to join, mm -hmm. and uh, got uh, actually we didn't win the elections. We we got second, but but uh, you know uh, got to. To the government on uh, less than one year, uh, I, I wouldn't call it really slow. Yeah, but that's but that is the Madrid case because in Barcelona the the, the expectation that municipal candidacies could be launched. I mean, the coup was already present, yeah, you know, and they the, the municipalist. Yeah, but Zaragoza you know, is a, is a similar example. Sure, sure. Las Mareas, we can. You're, you're completely right that you were preparing the path before Podemos, yeah. so, even before the European elections. Sure. Actually, I remember some of, some, some of your meetings like two and a half years ago when you were uh, talking about the democracy letter and you were mm -hmm. talking about uh, it, it networked politics and, and you were like cooking it, cooking it before, before doing the, the, the jump. And I, 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 think, I think, of but course, there they, they should be more smarter words than s slow and, and fast, but, but I think the, the attitude is somehow sure, related to Sure, but this is the common sense. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't pretend that we decided, you know, that we called with a book to make the, the municipal uh, challenge. It's because it was there. And then someone sometimes tries to explain it and put it in, in words that, that then it, it has also momentum and then people, you know, kind of uh, listen to what you were saying. But what I'm, what I'm saying is like what, what you were saying before is, is it's more than there is this format, and the format let's make a party and win the elections. I mean, this this idea, of course, comes on a big degree from Podemos and, and the fact that okay, yes, you you can actually make it. I mean, you can make it in four months for the European elections. We can make it, but the, even if the intention was 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 there. So I think that there is. Um, 
there is this sense of uh, what, what I was saying before about this kind of this functionality maybe of the platforms is like we, we make this joke of not this joke, but it is difficult to call them a party, right? And then we try to call it a non-party maybe, but it's not even a, a, a non-party. It is a dysfunctional structure in itself, which is okay. Because then it doesn't fit on this. It's to take a format, which is you make a program, you choose your uh, candidates. We did a radical uh, proportional system for electing the, the, the candidates. It's called uh, the Dodal system, which is in Madrid. In Madrid. We, we in Madrid did yeah. the system, <laughs> not Barcelona. Uh, other, other places also choose another system. So it's not that there's a good one. But what I'm saying is that you do all the, the steps and you embrace the rules, you even embrace the rules of government, but then suddenly there is something which is, at least I think in the case of Madrid, um, dysfunctional of that because it, it doesn't have this party organization behind it. Uh, any, anyway, I, I, I'd like to name an elephant in the room, which is Ciudadanos. You named it before. This sort of party, liberal party, uh, claiming and, and taking votes partially uh, from the same generation, uh, this new left is taking the votes. Uh, if you look at the polls, uh, Podemos and Ciudadanos uh, would win the elections if only people until 35 would vote. Mm. And the right wing, classic right wing party, Pepe, and the classic center left party, PSOE, uh, would win elections, of course, uh, in population older than 40. So you have a generation struggle uh, very strong. And Ciudadanos is weakening uh, other new left parties, or new left parties, What's in that struggle. What's the difference between Podemos and Ciudadanos, in your view? Uh, it has, a com I think it's easier to name the common thing because the rest of the, thing, the things are very different, I think. But it is a, gener a new generation of citizens uh, saying, okay, we have to start from scratch again. Thank you for everything you did, but That's not it's, my, it's my turn, okay? And uh, it is also about new faces. That is in common between Podemos and, and Ciudadanos. But, but, uh, Ciudadanos could have been part of another party in Spain, which is UPyD. Uh, but they wouldn't have been successful. Podemos, some of the people, the core of Podemos, the beginning of Podemos, could have been part of other party in Spain, and they wouldn't have been successful. So you mean the left party? Yeah, Izquierda Unida. Yeah, Izquierda Unida. So it is about new things, wiping out old things. I think we haven't uh, mentioned this thing of the confluence, which is like the, the big, I think, meme of the, the, meme, the, word. the <laughs> meme word of those, which is we are here together with parties from the old times, right? Like the, the leftist party was part of this of these platforms. We are here with also new parties as, as Podemos and with social movements, which are activists, but also a very loose feeling because we are here together to do this job. And, and this has more to do with this thing of what you are doing is not good enough. This is not democratic enough. Uh, you know, it has to be with the demands of the, for me, more of the May 15, and to trust which are the people that can do it. If you take Madrid, for example, the Confluence project in the city of Madrid took more votes than Podemos in the region, netto, not proportional. But this happened very similar in Zaragoza, and I think very similar in Catalonia. And, and, and actually Madrid yeah, Ciudadanos didn't, didn't got as many uh, votes as we thought it might have been. So it was a little bit controlled. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is that broadening it up uh, in one kind of funny way, this uh, center of the, how do you say tablero in? Uh, in playing board. Of playing board. Playing board. Okay, the center the of the playing board. board. Uh, was achieved on this uh, road much more by the citizen platforms than by Podemos, even when they were doing this discourse, which is more, much more to the, somehow to the center. Um, obviously, 
much can be achieved at a local level. Obviously, a lot can be done by changing the common sense around house housing, for instance, in, in Barcelona. But some of the limits, some of the constraints that we're faced are constraints that are national, supranational, whether that means European or, or global. And perhaps I want to close asking you for a one-minute reflection on how you see the process going forward, so how you see the upcoming elections and the uh, one-year horizon ahead of us in, in Spain. Maybe, Mahalo, we start from you and we go all the way down to Carlos. Uh, related to the whole conversation we just had, I don't think Podemos plus new other political parties in the left or grassroots parties are going to win the elections, but they will have a better result than the polls are saying now. Uh, and the rest of the thing is not very predictable. Uh, it could happen that conservative parties winning and governing. It could happen that conservative party is winning but not governing. Could happen even that Ciudadanos is governing. And it could happen that center left is governing. I mean, everything can happen. Uh, so for this slow track, for the fast track, I think things are ending uh, in these elections. For the slow track, in which Podemos, of course, can jump in, uh, I think things are going to be growing and, and taking these functional, very, very attractive forms in, in, the, in a few months' time. And we will see a post-Podemos era, even when Podemos is at the center of it, but a different approach uh, to, to this wave, uh, generational wave, very linked to 59th movement, and, and a very good opportunity to refresh and revolt a little bit. Refresh and revolt. Well, uh, about the elections, I, <laughs> I think it's very open, everything. So, in, I, I think it's, it's not possible to do a, a, some kind of view about it. But from my point of view, the metropolitan scale, I would say that the, the cities has to be, have to be deliberately tendentious, in a way, in order to build new consensus and to force uh, up, uh, Escalas mayores. Uh, scale Larger up. scale. Scale, scale, scale up, yeah. Uh, I, I think it has to be deliberate tendentious with the power, I mean. The, the, the power has one thing, that if you have the power, you can distribute it. So that's what cities have to do, in my opinion, in order to push uh, higher uh, governments to do the same and to build new consensus and new way of thinking about politics. I would say whatever happens is going to be good for the local level because it's there's not going to be a strong majority anymore so there there, there will be negotiations either if pepe with ciudadanos which creates a certain kind of tensions on certain aspects or if it's uh, pepe PSOE, which is maybe not an option anymore or if it's uh, so podemos uh, so podemos ciudadanos whatever combination is just opening up new spaces for a struggle, it's changing very basic things and it's also going to uh, basically confirm this, the beginning of the end, of, of the factual end of this uh, uh, transition uh, power struggle. What I, what I think we will see in one year from now is that we are going uh, we are really going to see great things coming from the cities. I think that is for us uh, it has been difficult to understand the machine. I mean, there is a limitation that has to do with what you said before, which is that actually what you were saying, having the government is not having the power and the power is somewhere else. What are you going to do at city level? But there is another complexity, which is how the machine in itself is designed. The state machine on national, regional, local level is designed in a way that makes it difficult to have these radical changes. Mm. It is really difficult. I mean, I'm not trying to excuse. It's like a description of the situation. The task is enormous. But I think that great things are happening, and both on, on very factual changes, but also on this micro level that we are going to see coming up from the, from the city. So I think that in a year time, we are going to see stronger uh, um, government in the cities with very good achievements, probably big conflicts with the movement that will actually make both the governments and the movement change. And this is an, it is a, an absolute radical need right now. We you, both have to change to a new situation. And I think that if the network of the cities uh, really work and manage to do uh, 
national level uh, issues. Uh, we are going to see an effective maybe counterpower to the state power, but we'll have another uh, kind of set of demands and needs, and this will have to be negotiated. So it's going, to, actually it's going to be fascinating. I think it's going to be incredible. I completely agree with that. Uh, I, I agree that uh, we are, that interesting times are ahead. Um, however, with all of that, with all of the great things that we'll see coming out of the cities, um, with the previously unexpected and un, you know peop, uh, unexpected and um, you know even better results that we'll see from Podemos than than people expected even when they announced the proposal, I think the future actually will bring a lot of dashed hopes, a lot of hopes that are not met. Um, I think that that is basically something that that the movements and the new upstart uh, political actors, institutional actors, are going to have to learn how to organize. Um, and I think that's the main challenge. How do we handle the dashed expectations or the dashed hopes of not being able to carry out um, the reforms or the changes that we would like to see uh, because of this entire realm that is very new to the new political actors and, um, and the ones that have chosen not to make to the, ju the jump to the institutions. Uh, if we don't learn how, and if, uh, how to uh, organize those dashed hopes, then they will be left to the heteronomy of the present, the conflicting norms and individual interests that are very quickly capitalized by the right-wing reaction, which Ciudadanos is the first, uh, the first harbinger of. Great. There are certainly dashed hopes ahead of us, and that's, if I may say so, a positive, uh, a positive element. Uh, it means that uh, wh wherever we may lose, wherever we may win, most probably a mixture of the two, what the Spanish experience has showed us, and it showed, I think, movements across, across Europe, is that uh, at least we can try. And uh, the political space remains a space that is open, remains a space that is negotiable, remains a space that can be reinvented even in its own, in its own mechanism, it's in, in its own structures, and in, in its own functioning. Of course, through a process such as this, uh, there will be a lot of dashed hopes, there will be a lot of uh, disillusionments, there will be a lot, of, a lot of risks, but there might also be uh, some victories, and certainly, uh, a great deal of fun ahead. <laughs> thank you all so much and thank you for listening to us uh, over the last thank 40 you. minutes and until the next time. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.